welcome to the Good News Express International, an inspirational program designed to explore how the good news of the gospel will change ordinary lives into extraordinary believers. Join prophetic teacher Bonnie Jones as she gathers testimonies of believers from around the globe, from the unknown to the well-known, from the hidden to the foreign. Everywhere in between, express the impact of the good news of Jesus. And now, here is Bonnie Jones. Welcome to the Good News Express, where everyone's testimony is welcome. You know, we want to hear what God has done in your life because the testimony of Jesus, that is prophecy, and He's worked in all of our lives, and we need to hear from you. It helps other people around the world. You know, we need to, it's time of harvest. And we're the harvesters. We need to be bringing people into the kingdom. And this is one tool that the Lord is using to uh, share the good news. Uh, today, I have a very interesting young man that I know you're going to enjoy his testimony. This is Pastor David White. He's in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And I know he's got so many interesting things to, to tell you. Uh, he pastors the Gathering Church. And um, David, welcome to the Good News Express. It's great to be with you, Bonnie, always. <laughs> always, yeah. I get to do a few meetings at his church this weekend. So that's just awesome. And uh, David, you know, I really want people to hear how the Lord has worked in your life. I think you just, what, crawled right out of the cradle and started ministering. Is that right? <laughs> no. No? No, I was, I was saved, you know, as some people as just a young boy. But um, like anyone, I experimented in the world, found that the world leaves you empty and dry. And, uh, but, um, but the Lord, I knew that he was going to use me to preach the gospel. I've known that. You know, when I was in high school, I would tell people, I'm going to preach one day. <laughs> and, um, and it happened. <laughs> yeah. Did they believe you when you said that? My one of my friends, my best friend, Greg Offer, did. Yeah. And he, he would he would he knew I was telling the truth, yeah. um, even though I didn't know all that I was saying. I didn't know how it would happen. <laughs> did you but grow God up? God writes Christian out home? our days, doesn't he? He does <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Did you grow up in a Christian home? I did. Typical Baptist church in Louisiana. Yeah. My dad was a deacon, you know, so we went to church Wednesday, Sunday nights, yeah. Sundays. <laughs> yeah. 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 So do you, you think you've got uh, like a firm foundation in the word being in the Baptist church? I believe so. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing the Baptist, you know, always stood. They preached the word and uh, believed the word was inerrant the word of god and yeah. but then god did some other things to add the other yeah. the other thing uh, i'm going to come back to your baptist roots in a little while but tell me um tell the audience how was it um like how did you come to meet the lord was it were you in a maybe a bible class or was it in church or in college it was, it was actually at a summer camp okay. at nine years old and I remember, you know, the counselor or whoever it was, it just made a lot of sense what he said. And, and I went out one day by myself and it was in a field and I knelt down beside a pine tree and just looked up into the heavens. You know, I remember it was bright that day, just prayed the simple prayer. Yeah. And it obviously worked. He heard my prayer as a nine-year-old boy. Yeah, he did. And then, then later, so... Okay, so kind of take us on your spiritual journey. So, um, okay. so you got saved in the field by yes. yourself at nine, and then yeah. in college or in high school, you knew that you were called to preach. So yes. how did your journey begin then? Yes, well, at uh, 19 years old, I was attending a, uh, another camp. It was a winter camp up at Ridgecrest here in North Carolina. And um, that night after the meeting, God began to convict me to surrender to preach what I had told people that I would one day. So I went out again and knelt down. It was in a winter night 
and I had a candle and I had my Bible. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know how the candle stayed lit because it was a January night. I, But, you know, when you're younger, cold, I guess cold doesn't bother you. But I was out, knelt down, opened my Bible. And I remember surrendering to preach that night mm -hmm. in Richcrest, North Carolina, wow. uh, just outside of Black Mountain. Okay. And that's that's where it began. Right at, right behind the mountain where Billy Graham lived. Really? So that was yeah, that was well, on the back side of that actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, you know, after that experience, I I think I told you before, that's when man things began to break out. All hell began to break out. <laughs> and I got in all kinds of trouble in college. And, uh, but, you know, God used all of that and uh, showed me that, boy, I'm going to have to be dependent on him. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, as a, you know, ended up going to seminary, ended up, uh, someone gave me a little cassette tape, you know, those days where they passed around cassette tapes on yeah. how to be filled with the Holy Spirit by Jack Taylor. Okay. And I listened to that and Again, the third time, I guess, I knelt down by my couch. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I said, Lord, this man, Jack Taylor, this makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, if I'm going to preach the gospel, I need this. And uh, nothing dramatic happened at that moment, but it sure, it did. I didn't know something dramatic happened, but it really yeah. did. And God heard that prayer. Yeah. And, you know, it's really interesting. That, that is what changed everything is when not only was I brought up with the word as a foundation, but then I was introduced to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I was one of those in the scripture. I didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, I knew there was, it was in the Bible. Right. But, but the Baptist real. Baptist church doesn't preach Holy Spirit. No. Much, no. No, but that changed everything. And Jack Taylor became my spiritual father. at the, Not at that moment. It was years later. Yeah. But, but that message impacted and changed everything. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that's why the Lord emphasized to me so often about um, when you get saved, you need to be baptized right away and then filled with the Holy Spirit. So the enemy doesn't come and steal from you. You know, yes. you said, yeah, everything broke loose when you got born again. And I, I wonder, had that been different if you would have been filled with the Holy Spirit? I think we still have the opposition but you yeah. begin having the tools to fight with, you know. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit gives you that function, that heavenly authority and power. Right. I mean, we have everything when we're saved. The Holy Spirit lives in us, obviously. But right. there's something about the Spirit of God coming upon us right. and anointing us, giving that unction from above. And to me, what really happened at that moment is there was a boldness that came up upon me. And uh, a passion like I'd never known before. And uh, that's, that's how it began in my life. Right. And I remember somebody prophesying, and I didn't know it at that point, but I remember was it Paul Cain that said there would be a million Southern Baptists that would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wow. Well, I think I was one of, the, one of those million. <laughs> you know, one of, one <laughs> of them. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, you had mentioned earlier that... Um, you you were in fellowship with Rick Joyner. Now, what did you do for Rick? And when was that? Yes. You know, one of the stops along my journey is where I met my wife. and We had our children. We were in West Virginia. And I got that uh, little pamphlet that Rick put out many years ago on the harvest. Oh. And he was speaking in Gettysburg. And so I went up to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I met Rick. That conference was actually... Uh, it took place in a hotel on the battlefield in Gettysburg. Really? And I remember after one of the meetings, I walked up to Rick uh -huh. and I said, you know, Rick, I'm going to call you one day. And I felt so stupid. I thought, what do you mean you're going to call him? You don't know him, you uh -huh. know, but uh, it happened that way because later on I was pastoring in, in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, of course, Rick was in, you know, Fort Mill and all. And so I ended up calling him. We played golf. And over a period of maybe, I don't know, a year there. But then he asked me to be his ministry assistant. And so I went to Morningstar and uh, started out actually in the mailroom. I would 
I'm the one that would, uh, you know, Bob Jones was speaking or somebody, I, the tape of the month. I was the voice of the tape of the month. Yeah. I would say this is the October tape of the month. September, Bob Jones is speaking or whoever. Yeah. I was that guy. And I would, you know, uh, I'd already been a pastor. So I didn't need to pastor anymore. But um, I, I could have worked in the mailroom. I remember telling the Lord, Lord, this is awesome working in the mailroom. But then I became Rick's ministry assistant. Yeah. And uh, did that for about a, I don't know, a little over a year uh -huh. until I had a dream and had to leave Morningstar, went down to Mississippi and pastored the church. We saw a little move of God. And <laughs> anyway, uh, and, uh, and I tell, just tell you this, it was often God has spoken to me through dreams. And when I had a dream where Rick Joyner was sitting in the, uh, he was driving the car and I was a passenger. And we pulled up to an area where he let me out of the car and I got out to go be with a, a group of people. And I remember turning around saying, Rick, I'll see you later. And for seven years, I wondered, God, what did that mean? See you later. It literally <laughs> meant see you later. Yeah. And uh, after we saw this move of God in Mississippi, where I was a pastor, um, I was with Rick. Uh, he he has some had relatives down that way in Alabama. So I he invited me to come back. So I came back to Morningstar just to write discipleship material, but ended up pastoring here yeah. at the gathering. We were in Wilkesboro at that time, but now yeah, in Moravian. I remember Park. that. Yeah. Yeah. So how long has your church been here at the gathering? Okay. We've been here just a little over eight, maybe nine years, okay. you know, out in Moravian Falls. Um, you know, Brad McClendon was the pastor when I came. And okay. we met in the big warehouse in, in uh, Wilkesboro. I remember that. Yeah. And actually, the reason I'm the pastor of this church, well, obviously, Rick asked me. But before that, a week before he asked me, I had a dream where Bob Jones appeared in my dream. And he was at the foot of the bed. <laughs> and it was the strangest dream. And, I, and he just looked at me and he said, arise. And in the dream, I literally rose up. I, but the main thing is what he said, arise. And I was just writing discipleship material. But right after that, Rick called me in his office and said, look, Brad is leaving. We want you to pray about you and Shirley being the pastor of the church in, in Wilkesboro at that time. Mm -hmm. And I just had that dream where Bob appeared in my dream at the foot of my bed. <laughs> and I said, Rick, I don't really have to pray about it. You know, I think it's the Lord. Because yeah. I remember sitting out in the congregation. And as I said, I'd already pastored. I didn't, I didn't have to pastor anymore. I was happy writing material, discipleship. It was my son's baseball coach. And, um, and we were successful because he had a great slider. And so I was a <laughs> successful coach. Yeah. I didn't have to do any, any of that. But when Bob appeared, it's like I knew. And then when I was asked, I knew. And that's when it began. I, I've been the pastor now for, I'm going on 14 years, longer than Ray Hughes, longer than Rick, longer than Steve Thompson, longer than uh, Brad, all of those guys. I tell Shirley all the time, how in the world have I remained for 14 <laughs> years? You know, and um, their battles. Oh, yeah. your, your promised land really is your battlefield. And so I heard someone say that, and that really is true. That's true. That's true. Wow. So, um, well, tell me, tell me about this since we're kind of in the COVID thing yet, how did your church fare during COVID? What did you see going on at that time? Well, at first, like I think most people, I really believed that it was, you know, serious. And, uh, so we closed down for about five or six weeks and, but then I realized pretty quick, wait a minute. I don't think we're being told the whole truth you know, the plane through nothing, you know, so help me God, I just didn't feel it. So we opened back up, but, at, but after about, you know, six weeks, we started meeting, but we went online and that seemed to open up some doors uh -huh. where we, I was just having services. I mean, people could come if they stayed, they kept their distance, uh -huh. you know, because we believed all that. But um, anyway, it opened up the door for us to begin to have online meetings. Now we had been on the web our church, mm -hmm. but it, I think it brought us into a new dimension, opened yeah. up doors that 
later on, I could see why the Lord really wanted us to fine tune what it meant to be online. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, I think the web is good for many things and it's been distorted like a lot of other things. But, you know, I think I remember years ago, the Lord telling me he was taking back. He, one was the what are they called? The silver screen, you know, Hollywood. He's going to take that back. Yes. And and um, the Internet, he is the enemy is the prince of the power of the air. But, you know, we really control what goes across it you know, across the airwaves. So with so many, with the churches being shut down, I think this has really given the kingdom, the upper hand, yes. um, you know, yes, the control is. of the airwaves. So yeah, the so, internet, you know, it's like the Lord is casting right now a big net around the earth. And who would have ever thought, you know, we know this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world as a witness, as a testimony to all the nations. And, you know, I thank God for all of those that, like the Moravians, you know, they had such emphasis of missions and preached the gospel in foreign lands and, you know, all the stories of the missionaries. But it's like, this is the final, to me it is, it's like, this is how it's happening because everywhere on the earth has the internet. Everybody, it seems like has a cell phone. I mean, there may be some real remote places that don't, but, uh, but it's like the net is being cast all over the world and the gospel is being preached just like the Lord said it would. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned the Moravians and you hear Moravian Falls, you do something called the Moravian lampstand. Is that right? Yes. So tell us about that. You have such a unique church. Well, we know that the Moravians had the 100 year prayer meeting after the Holy Spirit fell on August the 13th. Was it 1747? I think. But uh, after that outpouring, it was a love feast or communion service, you know, that missions, they were used of God to preach the gospel in many places. But then the 100 year prayer meeting broke out. So we just feel like, you know, we were to pick up that mantle. Now, we don't pray around the clock 24 hours a day, but we do every day have prayer here at the gathering. We call it the Moravian Lamb Stand because we we want to be a part of that, um, right. of relighting that, because the Lord said, my house above everything else will be a prayer. And we've had some major, amazing people that have showed up here from all over, many places around the world, just to pray, because we open the doors to prayer. Right. And, uh, but it's, to me, it's the foundation of everything that's ever happened here and will happen. And uh, it's because of the Moravian, their example. We're not Moravians. I'm a former Baptist. A lot of these guys are former heathen, whatever. You know, we don't know what they are. <laughs> well, the Moravians former came whatever. from Germany, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, and like, well, we have German roots. A lot of us do. And how, you know, I never did a research, but, I, you know, who's to say? Maybe we're yeah. from that Mor- Moravian lineage also, you know, but you're carrying it forward. Mm-hmm. And that's what's important. So um, yes. something else I find really unique with your church is that you have uh, baptisms like every Friday. Yes. Is that right? So tell us about that. So this, yes. I'm trying to tell you, this is where you need to come. The Gathering Church, Moravian Falls. So well, tell us about, yeah. tell us about the, the baptisms. Yes. Well, we, uh, a couple years ago, Todd Smith, the pastor of the North Georgia Revival, actually, um, I, I would I saw video clips of that revival that's been going on, what, three or four years now. Mm -hmm. And I would see them conducting baptisms. And as a Baptist, my first thought was, why in the world are they doing that? You know, I mean, you were baptized. You don't have, you're one and done. That's the way I, I (laughs) but anyway, I ended up going to a, they had a pastor's conference. So I went to the North Georgia revival at that pastor's conference. And I really felt like, man, I need to be baptized into what's happening after hearing the testimonies and how God was moving. And uh, so I was, and it was a major encounter with the Lord for me. I mean, I would have drowned, to be honest with you, had they not caught me. And I don't know how long I was out in the water, but I remember when I finally got my bearings together, I asked him, I said, where's Shirley? Where's my wife? Because we were baptized together. She Uh was long gone, they said. You've been in the water. So anyway, uh, 
that really, and then we invited Todd to come and he's been here a couple of times. Well, let, we let me back, like back a minute, David. Yeah. You were in the water down there in Georgia. So yes. did you feel something significant happen at that point then? Cause I know you, you lost Shirley, she was gone, but what did you feel different about you at that point? Anything significant? Well, I just believed that it was real, that it was significant. And it was a, uh, it was something God had chosen and it was outside of the box, you know, for me. And which is, that's always a good sign. But I, I don't know exactly what happened in those waters when I was out, but I feel like God marked us as one of the places that we were to carry on this. Okay. So we invited Todd here to the gathering and we started just doing baptisms first couple of times you know we'd baptize 175 180 i don't know there's a bunch of people yeah. and we eventually bought two baptistries we have one on each side and uh, but there was one morning a sunday morning we were going to have baptism that day just a couple people we were downstairs having the moravian love feast which is just a uh, you know what happened when the holy spirit was poured out way back there in their history so we have this love feast it's a breakfast fellowship so we came upstairs and anyway the baptistry over there sprang a leak and it had water had gotten halfway into the sanctuary and um, but nobody panicked i mean we were getting ready to start church but nobody panicked everybody grabbed towels and we were just soaking up the water but I felt like the Lord said, I baptized this church in this move of God. So mm -hmm. run with it. Yeah. So since then, we've been running with it. And people have come here from um, many places. And uh, we always emphasize, you know, there's nothing magical about the water. Because, you know, people can have a tendency to look at that. It's just a place of contact, a point of contact. Right. Where yeah. people enter into those waters and it's been like a launching pad for people into their ministry. People have had just amazing encounters with the Lord. Um, you know, the mikvah, the baptisms in the Jewish tradition, mm -hmm. you know, the washings. I believe it's been a place of repentance and cleansing from mm -hmm. the world separation for this hour, for the purposes of God now. Have you seen people healed? Um you know, we've had other? testimonies. Yes. Testimonies yeah. of healings. And, um, you know, I think I shared with you, the Holy Spirit has touched people dramatically in those waters. Some people not others pretty dramatic. And I remember one night this guy really had, he was touched major. And so the next guy that got in the water, I didn't want him to feel bad in case the Lord didn't touch him like Perfect. the guy before him. And I said, now, you know, it's not about what happens. It's by faith. You know, that guy was dramatically touched. Let's just see what God will do. But, you know, if it doesn't look like that, all is okay. It not only looked like that, it went way beyond. That guy was, <laughs> he was like, I mean, I, it was uncontrollable. Yeah. Anyway, I, like I've a never fish, said fish that. in the water? <laughs> I mean, it was hard. But there have been people, we've had to pull them out, pull them out, literally pull them out, carry mm -hmm. them out. Yeah. And that's not what we look for. And I think that's what God has honored. That's not what is exciting. It what's exciting is the Lord is there's transformation. I, I just really believe lives are being transformed. Yeah. Well, I believe that. I do indeed. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that. You're the only church that I know of uh here. I know there's one outside of Indianapolis that, you know, is doing the same thing. But, yes. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I think that needs to be more common, you know, because it's, it's so significant and, and it is, especially in this hour. And you know what, yes. I noticed behind you, David, I see the well of holiness behind you right under the fire alarm. So yes. what, what is that all about? Well, we have these banners around the sanctuary. Um, a lady that's a real Moravia from Germany came here and shared with us about the Moravian wells. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the well of truth, the well of prophecy, the well of diligence, the well of missions, the well of mercy, freedom, education, prayer, and the well of holiness. And there are 12 of them. And so we, did, we didn't know those wells existed. Um, and uh, so we had these banners made. And uh, so the well of holiness, though, we put under a bigger banner 
that you know you'd be interested to know bob somewhere in one of the shepherd's rods or somewhere he had this encounter where he went to heaven and or went to yeah or, or somewhere maybe went heaven no he went somewhere else and battled satan for the banner of holiness so right. it wouldn't have been heaven obviously but um and i may not have the exact detail of how that encounter went but somehow the story was that Satan had stolen the banner of holiness from the body of Christ. Right. Bob had this encounter with, went and captured it. Yeah. I think, okay. you know, I think it was in the second heaven is where he had to go. Okay. Yeah. That's where it was. Yeah. And he battled and anyway, about it. Anna Roundtree and some others knew about that encounter. So they created this gigantic banner mm -hmm. that represented what Bob captured. Right. from Satan, the banner of holiness. And so we have it on the wall just above the well of holiness. Are, are you written. able to turn your... Um... Yes, I am. There we go. Can you okay. see that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so that's written in like ancient Hebrew? It, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Some yeah. ancient language. And, I, and when we got that, um, these guys, Anna Roundtree and some others, you know, they recreated it from the land, the best that they could. And basically what it means is holy shalt thou be for the Lord thy God is holy. Right. And so we hoisted it over in Wilkesboro in the warehouse where we were meeting. And we had a time we worshiped the Lord and raised it up. And then we brought it over here, of course, the eight years we've been here. And I almost forgot about it. I just put it up there. But I think the Lord reminds us. Yeah. No, yeah. this is the hour the banner of holiness belongs to the church and it's a message it's who we are and we know it needs to be set apart as a people and all but uh but that's interesting it's here because of bob yeah now i know you mentioned last night that you feel bob's in the balcony there right <laughs> i tell people all the time you know they you know they want to claim him down in fort mill but he's part of our congregation now, now his bones are outside about what maybe 200 yards from the pulpit here. He's buried here. And it's a great honor to know that his bones are there. But a lot of times I'll be up in the pulpit and I'll look up and I, I don't, I've never seen it with my eyes, but in my mind's eye, I see a giant balcony and I just feel like it's the great cloud of witnesses. I believe Moravians are watching what's happening here because of the promises and the prophetic word. But I tell people, hey, Bob's up in that balcony. He's <laughs> part of our congregation. He's not down in Fort Mill. Well, no. you know, years ago when he was here, when he would come up to Moravian Falls, he had encounters with the Moravians. You know, yes. I mean, they were like the ancient, you know, Moravians and, and he saw them and, and interacted with them. So, you know, I think it's an honoring, you know, Number one, yes. that you're here, that you're honoring that heritage and the, the anointing that they carried, and you're really stewarding it well. And, and I think that's well, very you know, he said, Lord. Bob, I understand prophesied that from Moravian Falls, the gospel would be preached to the ends of the earth. Well, that's starting to happen well, because of the earth. That. Yeah, tell yeah. us what, what's happening. Well, I really believe, you know, when that se season of COVID where the restrictions are locked down. So we went and we really fine tuned the internet. And, uh, but God opened doors uh, for us to be on, uh, it's a internet television called Eternal Life TV. There's Isaac TV that's over in the Middle East and goes to 200 something plus nations and all. But recently God's opened a door for us to be on a, on a radio program in Uganda. Hmm. And uh, I do a Zoom call weekly but man that's become like a revival bonnie i they would send me testimonies of what god is doing in uganda and i for the longest of time i didn't read it that close because i just would be faithful i'd spend nine months and i'd preach for an hour on the radio but they started telling me wow man things are happening things are breaking out and that's so why i started reading the testimonies a little closer uh-huh and it is incredible what's happening. It's now, it's like a major move of the spirit has broken out in Uganda. I found out that Benny Hinn was there three years ago and he prophesied that a major move of the Holy Spirit would come to Uganda in three years. Well, guess wow. what? 
It's three years. And you started it, David. Well, the, I just was at the right place at the right time because <laughs> all I do is preach the simple gospel. It's on Grace Radio, FM 92. It goes, of course, internet as well. But it goes all over Uganda. And we're getting reports of testimonies I've never heard of. Now it's going into the Congo, Tanzania, uh, Rwanda, and um, one other country. Oh, Kenya. Kenya. And who knows where else? Yeah. But there have been something like 25,000 people that they know of, that they can count up, that have been saved. Uh, we're starting to have now discipleship meetings because, you know, he said make disciples. Right. Absolutely. Although... When I hear that, you got to have converts to have disciples. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. where it begins. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I, but anyway, we have to do that. So we're starting to have these meetings. And the last week, we're starting to, they're starting to gather like three to 400 people in smaller settings around the nation. And I just talk about disciples. Well, right at the end, I, I prayed that the baptism of the Holy Spirit would fall. So I prayed that. And then we ended the Zoom. And anyway, I started getting videos from them. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit fell. And I'm starting to get testimonies how the fire of God fell. And people were feeling the fire of God. But I've heard testimonies like um, they said 55 witch doctors along the border of Tanzania that were causing havoc in that particular region of uh, Uganda and into Tanzania, they were placing curses on the pastors and churches. 55 witch doctors got saved. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing healings, miracles, healings. One lady, I mean, there's so many of them, but one lady said her son was blind and uh, she, she was listening and she encouraged her son to put his hand on the radio when we prayed at the end. And so he did. And he was healed. Amen. He was his eyes. And another was blind from 10 years old. Yeah. And he listened to the radio. And he, he said, when we prayed, his eyes started opening. And now he's healed. But I've heard of tumors, uh, multitudes of Muslims. You know, Cameron, Yahweh, uh -huh. you know, they live here in Moravian Falls. And so one, one day I asked Cameron to come speak. And he spoke and, you know, his testimony is so powerful coming out of uh, Iran. And he said he knew of Jesus being the son of man, but not the son of God. Right. And in that little bitty program, Cameron shared how Jesus is the son of God. Well, I heard there were like 50 Muslim, no, 60 Muslim families and their children got saved listening to that that, that we amazing? know of. Wow. And they were baptized Churches, pastors are starting to say their churches are filling up. <laughs> and it just sounds like to me, Bonnie, that this is the time that God has chosen. And, he, and you don't have to be anybody special. Just be faithful, be obedient. That's right. And walk through the doors that God opens. Because I remember when they first invited me, uh, this lady she had a desire to preach on the streets and her testimony is amazing. She was, when she was eight years old, she was living in garbage dumps mm. in Uganda. And so she, uh, you know, met Jesus. And so she's, I don't know, what is she about 30 maybe now, but she's preaching on the streets. And then they had lockdowns uh, from COVID as you know, and so she couldn't preach on the street and she heard me on the radio and she felt like the Holy spirit told her, ask him, to preach on the radio and you help him yeah and she did that's amazing and so when i got the invitation i thought it was just for those you know you say well that i didn't take it that serious but i thought you should do that try and see what happens <laughs> well that's been nine months ago and now wow well god's think looking for willing vessels you know to somebody what was the yes. word i said you know follow me just follow me. Yes. Alert, you know. And preach the simple gospel. I had a pastor from the Congo send me a, a messenger. He said, Pastor David, I was listening to your message. He said it was so simple, but I began to just cry. I just began to cry. And so we're seeing how God is just all of a sudden reigniting the gospel 
Mm -hmm. There's power and authority and signs and wonders are following. And if it's happening in Uganda, you know it's happening in many places because you hear the testimonies. I'm hearing the testimonies. Right. We know it's happening yeah. all over the earth right now. And you know what I really like you said about the just hearing, hearing the word or like the, the lady had her son put his hand, you know, up to the radio. You know, there's no time or distance in the spirit. I mean, it's it's when you speak it, it's yes. there. Yeah. And it, it can and will happen. You know? And those people are hungry and they are so they are they, you know, all that they went through with Idi Amin and, you know, the bloodshed and the slaughter, the genocide. And then the lockdowns came and people literally starved to death. Yeah. And so they are desperate for hope. And now the country is open. And I think um, this, see, we've been doing it for nine months. And I think over the last three to four months is when they open back up the country. So for the first four to five months, I'm just speaking on the radio when they're in lockdown. Yeah. So God used that. They had they were a captive audience. You know, you know isn't that funny? The the year 2020, you know, for the shepherd's rod, the Lord told me it's the year of the mouth. And then we had to cover our mouth, but you know, it didn't yeah. stop us. Like he really used our mouth to speak. You know, we may have had to cover it in public, but he sure used us as Christians to speak his word. Yes. And look yes. at what amazing things happening by you just saying, yes, Lord, I will, I will do this, you know. And yeah, it took you by surprise. But now I think there's that hunger and thirst in you now to just keep pressing in and doing more. Well, yes. And so, I, you know, after reading the testimonies, I thought, you know, we need to be praying about this a little more. So anyway, <laughs> I asked last Sunday, um, Lou Ingalls, former ministry assistant, goes to our church. And so I asked his wife um the thompsons and anyway i asked her to form a team and so she right now is connecting with my the interpreter there and just trying to start now bathing this in prayer they were handling the prayer over in uganda but here it was just me and now we realize wait a minute this is a real move of god so we yeah. want to start praying our prayers it'll spread throughout africa because you know reinhard bonke traveled all through africa and he would say africa shall be saved Right. Well, maybe we're walking in some of the fruit of the seeds that were planted, yeah. but we're asking God, let it spread into Asia. Let it spread. I know people may think, ah, you're asking God for too much mm -mm. bull. <laughs> this is the time that <laughs> this is the time to ask him for big things. So we're asking, let it spread all over the world. I mean, yeah. we need, a, we need revival in America like never before. We oh, need wow. a move of God. And you know, there was a saying in the New Testament, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yes, look what came out of Nazareth. Well, can anything good come out of Uganda? Yes, what's happening? Can anything good come out of Moravian Falls, little bitty Moravian Falls? Yes. Can anything good come out of Podunk Holler, Ohio? Yes. Podunk. Yes. <laughs> Wherever. Yes. It's in the small, insecure, forgotten. People have written you off. God is doing something in our hour to get him all the glory. Man. Wow. Well, we just were preached a sermon, whether you realize it or not, that's powerful. I mean, that's just absolutely powerful. And, you know, God is just using one little guy from Moravian Falls to do a mighty work in another country and countries, you know, throughout the yes. world. So yeah, it's amazing. Well, David, you know what we need to, um, kind of wrap things up now but if people want to get in contact with you maybe they'd like to visit here or just contact you get more information about your church or maybe invite you to minister or something how would they contact you what would be the best way for them to reach you well, they can just email me personally at harvest now at earthlink.net harvest now small letters at earthlink.net we were discussing earlier you know i've had that email forever yeah. And I get a lot of, like everybody, junk emails. So it takes a while to go through and delete all the ones. And, uh, but uh, man, that email speaks a lot to the season. It is harvest now. And at Earthlink, God is doing something. And the net, 
is being cast. And uh, but I'd appreciate people praying for what God is doing. You know, now that we're doing these uh, discipleship meetings, it's kind of expensive because you have to rent the equipment and we need help. We need help. I need help because they're they want to do these now all the time these discipleship meetings so you have to set up you have to have a strong internet connection you have to have speakers you have to rent the facility and i was just telling my wife you know wow this is going to cost a little bit she was just reminding me david don't worry about the cost you just step forward god will take care of it. so i need my wife we need those encouragers so yeah. i'm not going to worry about it but i'm going to believe god but if they would when they email us just put uh Uganda revival or you know whatever yeah just so we'll know and I won't miss their email but harvest now at earthlink.net and uh, we'd love to stay in touch with people if they're visiting in the area they are our email for the church is the gathering info is our website the gathering info. yeah David and, I just uh, wish you could get more enthusiastic <laughs> I'm yeah, well, you. <laughs> you know, we're having Friday night meetings. We call it Carolina Fire. Yeah. We've been doing it for over a year now because Etienne Bloom, a good friend of yours, prophesied that we were to do that. And uh, I, I'd been feeling we were. And, and uh, so we have Friday night meetings. We will be baptized people. But I think something's revved up. Sundays, I, I feel such, I don't know, I am have such expectancy. Just hearing What's happening in Uganda is building expectancy in me here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, for those who are watching, if you want to sow into some really good soil, this is the place. I hope, you know, it'll be posted there what his uh, contact info is. But sow into some good soil because that work that's taking place there in Uganda, I mean, this is, this is God. It's nothing man can generate. Just one little gal with the heart sold out to the Lord invites you and everything's breaking loose. So, I mean, it, it's, and it, you said about nine months, that's, you know, how long you're pregnant. Well, not you. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, it takes that now, long yes. to, yeah, to carry a baby. So, I mean, God's really been, been birthing this. So, you know, and using you to do it. So, yeah. Well, David, we need to sign off for now, but could I ask you to pray for the people before, before we do yes. that? Be okay. glad to. Lord, I just thank you for all of those that are a part of this. And we just pray, God, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the baptism of fire. We pray, God, for revival fire to be released in the hearts of people, Lord, uh, in cities and nations. God, we are desperate in this hour. And we thank you for the awakening that really has awakened us to the desperation of the times and how our only hope is Jesus Christ. You are our only hope, and we lift up our eyes to the hills from where our help comes from, and our help comes from the Lord. And so, Lord, just touch people right now. God, give them faith and hope and just fresh vision, Lord, of what you're doing in this hour. That, Lord, that whatever the enemy's doing, God is doing far, far greater. And truly it is a greater seed that's in us than he that's in the world. Encourage people, Lord. And I thank you for Bonnie. And I thank you for this time we've had together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, David. It's been a real joy to have you with us. And I just know God is working through you and going to continue to bless you as you are faithful to him. So while we need to say goodbye for today, I just want to remind you, if you would like to share your testimony, everybody's testimony is important. You know, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to go into all the world, all the earth and preach the gospel. And you see there's fruit from just one person that's faithful. So we need to do that. And we want to hear what God is doing in your life. All of you have something that you can share. If you would like to be a part of the Good News Express, Go to our website. It's didyoulearntolove.org. And um, there's a little button there you can click on. It's for the Good News Express. It will take you to an application. Fill it out and we'll be back in touch with you soon. Okay, so till next time, be blessed. We hope that today's testimony has both glorified God and implanted the seed of a new perspective of his love for you. If you are wondering, how can I get my testimony on board the Good News Express, simply go 
go to our website at didyoulearntolove.org and click on the link for the Good News Express. It will take you to the easy to fill out application page. Once you're finished, click Submit.